we. It's good to be in the house of the Lord this morning, isn't it? Yes. And uh, I know, you know, I know we should have an organization in our service, but uh, that was good. That was good. Um, it's been quite a week. We had a great time at VBS this week, and uh, wow, it, uh, I think. Uh, you know, a lot of lives, a lot of kids' lives, I think, were touched and changed, and uh, it was good. It was good. And I just want to thank everyone who stepped up and did a part this week, kind of getting out of your comfort zone a little bit, maybe even. Thank you. Open your Bibles to Psalm 56. Psalm 56. This is a song of David uh, when the Philistines captured him in Gath. In Psalm 56, it says, Be merciful to me, my God, for my enemies are in hot pursuit. All day long they press their attack. My adversaries pursue me all day long. In their pride, many are attacking me. When I am afraid, I put my trust in you. In God, whose word I praise, in God I trust and am not afraid. What can mere mortals do to me? All day long they twist my words. All their schemes are from my ruin, for my ruin. They conspire, they lurk, they watch my steps, hoping to take my life because of their wickedness. Do not let them escape. In your anger, God, bring the nations down. Record my misery, list my tears on your scroll. Are they not in your record? Then my enemies will turn back when I call for help. By this I will know that God is for me. In God, whose word I praise. In the Lord, whose word I praise. In God I trust and am not afraid. What can man do to me? I am under vows to you, my God. I will present my thank offerings to you. For you have delivered me from death and my feet from stumbling that I may walk before God in the light of life. Praise His name. Praise His word. Let's pray this morning. Father God, we give you thanks this morning for your word. We thank you, Lord God, of the truth. Now we just pray and ask, Father, that as we come into a time of deep focus on your word, that you can open all of our hearts our minds, our eyes, Lord, to what you want us to know individually. And we ask this, Lord God, in Jesus' name. Amen. So our world today is not unlike the world of yesterday, of a thousand years ago, two thousand years ago, eight thousand years ago. The same world where nations or people don't trust nations. They don't. They never have, and they never will. But then we come into a closer environment within our own nation where people don't trust this group of people, uh, and, and they're thinking that someone's always trying to conspire against them. Or we bring it into a closer situation where, where families don't seem to be able to trust each other in things. We have a trust issue. We have a trust issue in our world, in our nation, within our own families and friends that we just don't seem to trust each other. But there's one person, no matter what the circumstance or situation is, that we can always, always put our trust in. And you know who that is, and that is God Himself. He is a God that we can always call upon. He is the God that we can look to. He is a God that we can put all of our trust, all of our hope, all of our confidence, all of our faith in. God. Do you trust Him this day? In all aspects, in all situations, of your life. You give Him complete trust. We read in the Great Commission where we are to go out and, and make disciples of all nations. 
He calls us so often into the waters, if you would. He calls us to get a, He gets us out of our comfort zone, does He not? He will take us into places that we just... We, we, we just aren't familiar with. Maybe we just don't like being there. He calls us out into the deep. Where the waves are tossing and turning and blowing and pushing. The winds are there. The rain's coming down. And God takes us there. But where He takes us, He will be there. Where He takes us, no matter what the circumstances or situation is, He will be there. I mentioned a little bit ago that God, this past week in our vacation Bible school, we had some people got, getting out of their comfort zone, doing things that, that they just maybe have never done before, or was unfamiliar with, or maybe hasn't done a lot. But you know what? God called them to do that. And they were obedient to God's calling. And they got out of their comfort zone and they stepped into the waters. Just like Peter, when he was on the boat, Peter was willing to step out into the waters. My question to you this morning is, if God is calling you to do something, are you willing to step out of the boat into the deep? Are you willing to do that? Because the waves will toss, the waves will, will, will you know, the wind will blow, the rains will come, and, and just because God calls you there doesn't mean it's going to be easy. He calls us so often to the toughest and the most difficult situations maybe we've ever encountered. But when He does that, He has a purpose and He has a reason for that. Because you can have an impact on the life of someone else. Because your faith may need strengthened. Your trust in Him may need to grow. He calls us into the deep for so many reasons that maybe we just don't even know at a particular time. It was really cute on Friday night as Buddy was going over the Vacation Bible School week with the kids. How much all these children remembered the stories and remembered the things that went on this past week. You can't tell me you didn't have an impact on the life of a child. We we're a little bit concerned about the numbers that we might have this past week because we haven't had vacation Bible school for two years because of COVID. And yet we had a great turnout and kids' lives were touched. May Asher Glade Church always, always, always have a vacation Bible school and where people like you can get out of your comfort zone and into the deep and have an impact on the life of a child. Out in the mystery, out in the great unknown, where you're not familiar, God is there. God is there. And, and I like, again, like the way Buddy told the one story on Friday night, you know, we may be reaching up our hand to God, but it's not us grabbing hold of His hand. It's God grabbing hold of ours because we can have a tendency so often when we grab His hand, when the, when the waves get tough or things get hard or challenges come along, we may let go. But we reach up our hand and He grabs us. And during those tough times when He says that He'll never leave us and forsake us, He's holding on to us. He's, he's there. He's there. When you are going through tough times in your life, I want to encourage you this morning to trust in Him. Just as our psalmist David this morning talks about, I will put my trust in you. My enemies are attacking me. I'm surrounded by my enemies. I don't have any chance of survival, Lord. But I trust you. I trust you. I want to encourage you today to have that trust in God. He wants you to have that trust in Him. 
His mercies and His grace abounds when you put your trust in Him. See, when you go out and do the things that God wants you to do, He is going to ask you to get out of your comfort zone and to be uncomfortable. I don't think, let me look it up real quick here. Hang on a second. I'll read through this, hang on. Nope. It doesn't say in there anywhere about God making you comfortable when He calls you to ministry. It doesn't say that. He simply says that He will be with you in that ministry wherever He may send you. Or in life in general, when you're up against a tough situation in your life, when things are really, really, really hard and you just sometimes feel like giving up. And maybe you are, there's even times that you're just questioning and wondering about God's faithfulness. Is He really faithful? He says in His Word that He's faithful, but is He really faithful? And does He really care about my troubles? Does He care about my circumstance? Does He care? Does God understand what I'm going through? Have you ever asked those questions? Lord, are you really faithful? Do you care about my troubles? Do you understand where I'm at in my life? What's going on in my life, Lord God? Are you able? Can you rescue? Can you really do that, Lord? Are you able to rescue me from this situation? Can you save me from what I'm going through? My adversaries, those people who are against me, are just piling, they're, they're, they're shooting arrows at me, throwing darts at me, throwing stones at me. Can you really rescue me? Do you really understand? Are you able? Will you be faithful to me as you were to the people of the Scriptures? I want you to pause for one second right now. And I want you to think right now of the faithfulness of God. In your life, has God been faithful to you? Has He taken you through... I'm not saying it's been easy. But has God taken you from this point to this point? Have you survived? Have you gotten through it? You know, I know some of you have gone through some really, really hard things in your life. But did God get you through it? See, He was faithful before in your life. He will be faithful again. When your back is up against the river or up against the sea, He will part that for you so that you can walk through. Because He is faithful. He's done it before in your life. He will do it again in your life. Because He is faithful. Because He does care. Because He will rescue you from the dangers and from your adversaries. To trust Him. Will you give your complete trust to God today? He just wants you to give it to Him. Whatever it may be that you're going through. There's a mountain maybe in front of you and you're trying to figure out how am I going to get through this situation? How can I overcome what's in front of me now, Lord? This is, this is the biggest mountain I've ever faced in my life. How am I going to get through it? I don't think I can get through it, Lord. He is just simply saying to you, trust me. Trust me. Trust me. You're my child, He is telling you. Listen to His voice when you're going through these situations and just trust Him. He'll move the mountain. He'll part the sea. He's done it before. He'll do it, be He'll do it again. 
He can and He will. It's darkness out there. You just don't know. You're wandering around in darkness and you can't see. You're in that tunnel. Am I ever going to make it out? Which way do I go? Look for the light. Trust God. Let Him hold your hand and take you through the darkness. Back into the light. He will place you back on solid ground once again. Uh, but the waters do get high and they do get deep. Trust Him. It can get confusing sometimes because we have a tendency, don't we? When things are going tough and we just... And we, we just kind of internalize it and keep it to ourselves and bring it into ourselves. And it's not till we're at our wit's end that our back is truly up against the wall or against the sea it's that we decide to go ahead and trust God. Trust Him early. Know that He is faithful, that He is the deliverer. Trust God in the fact because he, you know, he loves you. You are His child. When you're growing up as a child, and when we have our own children, but as a child, we trusted our parents. And we want our children to trust us as parents. And no parent would give their child a serpent in place of bread, would they? No. Our children trust us with complete trust. God wants you and me to trust Him even with a greater trust. Trust Him to stay with you, would you, please? This book that's in front of me in the book that you have, whether you have it here with you today or it's at home or wherever it may be, is full of promises of God. And you read through it and see, see all the things that God did. It's like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. You know, they're before the king and the king's ready to throw them into the fiery furnace. They didn't know if God would, quote, deliver them from the fiery furnace. He, they just said He can. And He did. But they trusted in God. When Daniel was thrown into the lion's den, he didn't know if those lions would destroy him. But he still trusted in God. Yes, when Moses was backed up against the Red Sea, the people had to trust in God. When the disciples were all gathered after the crucifixion of Jesus, and they're all gathered in the room together with fear, they still had, in the midst of all their fear, to trust in God. When the doctor comes and gives you a bad report, trust in God. Trust in God. When you look at your bank account and wonder how am I going to be able to pay these bills or how am I going to put food on the table or how am I going to be able to do this, that, or the other thing. Trust in God. Is it easy? Not in our human nature, no. But call upon Him. Put your trust in Him. And He will carry you through trust. That's the song we're going to close with, Trust and Obey. I don't have a clue what number that is. 437. Could be. It is. I believe you. Who said that? Okay. Okay. <laughs> either you either you were playing on that one, Bonnie, or, or I, I don't know. But, uh, I got that applied to your, to your Okay. Okay.
Okay, so that's, that's what we're going to close with here in a minute. But just give all your trust to Him. Let's, so we all know what Proverbs 3 5 says Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not unto your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge Him, and He shall direct your path. That's trust summed up in one scripture verse, isn't it? Trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Not just part of it, but with all your heart. Just give it all to Him. You know what? This week coming up, you're going to go through some challenges. I promise. I promise you, some kind of a challenge is going to be facing you right, right in front of you. Okay? Whatever that may be, I don't know. I don't know. But when you see it, remember Proverbs 3, 5. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not unto your own understandings, but in all your ways acknowledge Him and He shall direct your paths. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. It's coming this week. Something's coming your way. I don't know what it is, but just trust.